Welcome back to the Expert Walkthrough for Bloodborne, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I have finally returned from my unexpected downtime. Long story short, I actually suffered a back injury recently while I was uh, at work. Well, it's, it's not an injury that actually happened on the job, it was just uh, cumulative stress from uh, constantly doing the work that I do, and... Uh, I injured my back and had to take some time off work, multiple doctor visits, and haven't had a whole lot of time to sit down and do anything that I want to do without being in pain anyways. So uh, we're in the clear now. Um, I'm fine now. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm back working, doing my job again. Uh, my back still hurts. I'm on medication for it, but uh, nothing serious happened. I went and saw a doctor. I'm going to go see a chiropractor soon and see if I've done any permanent damage to my back. Let's hope I didn't. But, yeah, that is that is the explanation behind the absence. A little bit of downtime so I can let my back heal from work. So, I know you guys are probably really tired of seeing Bloodborne come up in your feet from my channel. But, I mean, I can't just abandon this walkthrough. We definitely have to finish what we start, and I've said many times on this channel that I always finish what I start. Sometimes in a different form that it started in, but I finish it either way. I never go back on my word. It's my ninja way. So, you guys probably already know where we're heading. We are going to Mikolash, host of the Nightmare. We have Mikolash, Murgo's wet nurse, and the two end bosses of the game before we're finished with this adventure. One of those end bosses obviously being optional. You don't have to fight Garamin if you don't want to. I'm gonna destroy him. But you're probably noticing that I have zero blood echoes, right? Uh, yeah. It's something that I keep learning the hard way, but I really need to start plugging in my damn controller when I record a video, because uh, as soon as I started fighting the boss, my my controller started blinking, and I, I got him into phase two and everything. I already looted all the items and everything, and well, I gotta gotta scrap that recording because I died right in the middle of it. But uh, I will show you guys the loot. There's uh, obviously an item right on the steps here. It's a kin cold blood, I believe. You have to chase him for the first part of the fight until you corner him in the room where you can actually hit him. And what I typically do during this fight is I mute him. I mute the voice setting in the options and turn off the subtitles because I hate it when he talks during the boss fight, but I mean, it's, you know, it's whatever. I'll leave it on there so you guys can listen to it, though. And obviously, you hit him and he teleports. There's no solid way to keep doing damage while you're chasing him. I am choosing to use the Tenitris in this fight because it is fast and it has very heavy bolt damage. Uh, Mikolash is resistant to Arcane, but he is not resistant to Fire or Bolt. And he's finally going into the damn room. So you're going to notice a pattern. Every time you corner him and he goes into a room, there's going to be two minions. The only attack that he can perform right now... Ugh, watch out for those things. Urgh, I hate that poise is not a thing in this game. But, uh, Tenitris obviously is destroying these guys in two hits and they're done. But he can only use Augur of Ebriatus in this form. He can't do anything else other than a fist attack, which he does very rarely. So once he does that, you can really lay it into him, but he reacts like that. He will use the Augur of Ebriatus right as you start attacking him, so make sure you don't get greedy. Leave yourself with enough stamina to get away after you do your string of attacks, like one, two, three, four, and that's barely enough for me to dash away. If I hit him five times, I'm going to get hit in the face with that, and since he's pure arcane, it's probably going to do like half my health. I mean, you can charge attack him since he doesn't really dodge. 
and you can R1 spam him, whatever you want. Now he's going to go into the second phase of the fight, where he develops a second attack, a whole new attack. It is an attack that officially makes him dangerous. He is uh, capable of doing a call beyond now, and he, yeah, he's still going to have minions in the room with him. Now, when you go down here, don't go down here yet. Like this is this is death waiting. Oh, excuse me, the hiccups. This is death waiting to happen. Shut up, Mikolash. Um, there are minions down here. Lots of smaller enemies, and one of those like. I don't know, butcher moms, I guess you would call them. One of the big, dark, mom-like figures that has the, like, the butcher knife, the big cleaver, and the chain whip. There are a bunch of those down there. I don't recommend going down there. But there will be a scrambler right here on the stairs. And, uh, I would recommend smashing the scrambler before it goes too far down. And because it drops three bloodstone chunks. Now, when you go up, there's I an mean, item right here. This is gonna be blood vials. Got a couple enemies down here, but they are squishy. This enemy right here fires oh, poison gosh. bolts with the crossbow. We have already run into them once. Yeah, he talks like that across the whole boss fight. It's kind of annoying. And he's right up there. Now, there are items in this place that you want to grab during the boss fight. I'd, I'd recommend it, at least. There is a Kin Cold Blood Tier 10 oh, down here, which should be... Some say Cosmo. Oh, shut up. Yeah, I know there's a corpse right here with the iron door key. We will use that after the boss fight. And then right here on this corpse is where the, uh, the Tier 10 Kin Cold Blood is. That's that's a big item. You want that. That's a lot of blood oh, echoes. Course. Okay. Alright, when you follow him in here, he can go through the mirrors, which is extremely cheap. But I mean, whatever. Uh, there are... Quick silver bullets on this corpse right here. Here's my echoes where I died because my controller failed. Ah, oh, cause. Or well, some say cause. Some say oh, shut the friends. fuck up. He's probably gonna run into this room. Oh, no? Okay. Since he only runs away, as far as I'm concerned, the only dialogue he should have is... Woo -woo 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 -woo. I do hate that he can run as fast as you, though, with, like, infinite endurance. Like, I mean, sometimes you straight up can't catch him. Yeah, he's gonna go down now. Yeah, and they, like this, he originally jumps down there. And what you can do is, since I'm not really using my Quicksilver bullets right now... What? Oh, I can't use the cannon either, that's right. Damn, that's annoying. I don't have the strength for it. Hmm. Let's see, I don't have anything to throw at him either. Actually... Yeah! And then there's a corpse right here. It's, uh, right past the drop. He's just gonna keep coming back. That's interesting. I'll keep hitting you with these. Free damage. It only costs three. Ah, 
<laughs> I wanted to hit him right there. And then he does that, because he's a jerk. Oh, shit! Get out of my way! Woo, those iframes, though. Alright. He doesn't have a whole lot left going for him right now, so what you need to do is you need to find your way back up the stairs. Again. Oh, shut up! Shut up! That is the original way in. Shut up. I hate hearing him talk so much. Okay, this is where you need to go. You need to find the other break in the stairs, and yes, obviously. Yes! I never land that. There's a call beyond. Timing, timing. That's all it is. Do not dodge too late. Do not dodge too early. Boom! It's all in the timing. Practice, practice. Corner him if you can. And then, obviously, he has a punch attack, which is kind of annoying. And... Gadoosh! Ah, that was a little too late. Nope. Nope. Oh, man, that lingering hitbox, though. <laughs> Especially if you're too close to. That attack is extremely frustrating. Ah. No. Okay. Now what you can do... Yeah, that's tragic, but what you can do to make that very last part a little more doable is uh, that cage you see us standing in front of. You can prevent his minions from going in there with you, and as long as you don't have those puppets in there while he's at the call beyond phase, it makes it that much easier. Because I'm telling you right now, if you fight him in the second phase with puppets in the room, he is substantially more difficult because you have to dodge enemies and you have to dodge a call beyond which as you can see is not the easiest task but other than that he's a relatively simple boss all you have to do is chase him and listen to him babble about nonsense and we are definitely gonna go back and get some of that loot so I'll go through the things that you can get from that room. Obviously, the most important thing that you get from that room is the Iron Door Key. Of the three great bridges that link the two cathedral cradles, this key opens the Iron Door that leads to the mid-level bridge. There are no thieves in the nightmare. Then why lock a door? Be warned, there must be a very, very good reason. And there is. It's going to be very significant. And his puppets, they stay dead. It's amazing. Now you can loot freely. Obviously, you're going to have to kill the smaller grunt enemies that we already saw earlier in the stage, but it's not going to be too much of a problem. And you do get a tier 10 and a tier 9 kin cold blood just from looting around. Here is the next lantern. Definitely go ahead and light this. Man, this feels weird. Like, just even having the controller in my hand playing this game feels weird. Because I haven't touched a video game and since I last uploaded this, other than... Well, that's a lie. Uh, the only game that I have touched since my last upload on my channel is... I did buy Salt and Sanctuary on the PlayStation Store. I would highly recommend you guys buy that game, and I find it really hard to believe that anybody watching my videos doesn't know what Salt and Sanctuary is, because, I mean, it's kind of a big deal. It's like the, the ultimate 2D side-scroller Souls game that had so much potential, and it was created by a developed team of two. Just a guy and his wife are the ones that made it. 
And I do not want deadly poison, neither do you. Nope. Oh my god, they get poised, but I don't. Okay, now we're gonna have to fight the, the mom. I'm pretty sure she's like right around the corner. Yeah, the scrambler is kind of placed there to get you killed. They want you to chase it all the way down the steps, because a scrambler is hard to hit on steps unless you're smart and you use overhead attacks. Yeah, we're going to have to parry the shit out of this thing. No, way too late. There we go. Oh, yeah. The damage. Thanks to that rune. Your mom's not here anymore. Nice try. But you're done. And we got the Moon Rune, the final stage. Now, if you guys didn't notice this lesser detail that's kind of hard to pick up, you notice that some of the runes have a faded look, as in, like, it doesn't seem to be etched in as boldly to the rune, like the difference between these. But the more bold the rune is, the higher the effect is. Like, Communion is very faded right here. It almost looks like it was scratched in with a, a pencil. Where something like this actually looks like it was physically chiseled into the rune. This only gives you one because it's faded. This one gives you two. And as it becomes more visible, you get more. The effect is uh, increased. We got the strongest moon rune. Where it's like etched in really boldly. And uh, you get more blood echoes from the moon rune. It's like every enemy that you kill, including bosses, gives you a greater amount of blood echoes. I believe the... The final moon rune gives you like an extra 33% from every enemy that you kill, including bosses. That's a lot of blood echoes. It is essential for farming. Alright. So, you definitely want to go down there and get that. I mean, if, if, if you don't really care about profit in this game... Or currency, I guess, and how many blood echoes you have. Just know that you're saying that you don't care about how fast you level up. And let's be honest, you do. But yeah, Salt and Sanctuary. It is actually very fun. It is the most I have ever enjoyed a side scroller game since Maple Story. And you guys, we've talked about this, I know. Anybody who picks up Maple Story now and tries to play it is probably going to hate it, but it's it's a nostalgic thing. I've always had a guilty pleasure for Maple Story because I've played it since I was a very small kid. I have very fond memories with that game. Okay, I think we're good. I always scour the place one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything because I can't be 100% sure that I picked up every single item during that first attempt. I just know that I got most of them. Yeah, what we need to do now is we need to go back and level up. Because we are going to start the most difficult part of the Nightmare Mensis in just a minute. Make sure you have your sedatives, make sure you have your blue elixirs, make sure you have all of that. Okay, let me use my... Kin Cold Bloods. Welcome, what? Very well. Alright. Oh my god, I can only level up once after all that. Shit. Okay. May as well put it into strength. A little bit more damage. Okay. I am going to switch my gems over to the wheel, because that's something that I also did in that video, was I, I switched my gems from my Ligarius wheel to the Tenitrus. We are going to change that now. Uh, 
Oh man, that damage boost. And we used to nitrous a shit ton in that fight. Now what I need to do... Let's see, physical 8.1. And we're going to take them off the boom hammer as well. Physical 9.5, I think that was the one. Yeah. And then the tempering one was a 6.3. Um, I do not want that on my tinnitus. Not worth. Okay see what we're rocking right now. Yeah, that's that's not bad. We've got... Well, no, that's terrible. I need to see what the Legarius wheel is going to be. 483. That is awesome. That's not even its final form. And we need to buy stuff. I do really want to buy... Ros Marinus, but it's extremely expensive. It's going to be pretty much a better version of the Flame Sprayer for us. But we're not going to need it during this part of the game. Like, it would be really silly for me to buy this weapon, like farm the Echoes for it, and then upgrade it, because everything that we are about to fight in the Nightmare Menses is completely resistant to Arcane. We're going to be fighting Mind Flayers and Spiders. And the only thing that we're going to run into that's not resistant to Arcane is probably just Giant Pigs. You guys remember from the first playthrough, dual Pumbas. I don't think we can buy anything new either. The Molotovs are really helpful for the next part, but my god are they expensive. Okay, equip our pebbles... Where they be? There they are. Okay, I don't need that. A call beyond. <laughs> I want to be able to use it, but we don't have quite enough yet. Let's switch it out for blue elixir. Definitely don't need that. We need sedatives. For sure. That thing is costly. We're going to swap that out for a different ability. Uh, not that, though. A beast roar, why not? We'll try it out. It's actually quite fun to use, especially near cliffs. Damn it, I didn't buy what I said I needed to buy. Okay, we have 14, so that means we need 9. Okay. Oh man, let the rage begin. The level becomes extremely difficult at this point. Like, I know I've already died plenty, but it, that's just the beginning. This, this level, the Nightmare Menses, becomes extremely frustrating during this part. And I can almost guarantee you we're going to get invaded. You're going to see that bell ring woman pop up. There is... There are two... There are two of those dog things right there, and then there's a... Yep, there she goes. There is a bird-headed dog as well, trying to use the defense. Bring your ass here. Yep, there it goes. I might have to switch to offline. We 
We'll uh, play around with this person though. Please don't be a scrub. Where the hell is he? There he is. All right, let's do it. Oh, come on. You're... Hmm. Woo! The parry fish, it's real. No! Oh, man. That was fast. <laughs> that was really fast. I think I dodged, like, a quarter of a second too early to get out of that with my iframes. But, uh... That was interesting. That gun spam. Phew. I don't think I've ever fought somebody in Bloodborne that has spammed a gun like that. That was kind of interesting. Or the R1, either. Like, uh, I think most of the fights that I have in Bloodborne are typically against people that have rather astounding ability and don't really fight so barbarically. That was kind of threw me off. And that thing is going to wake up. No. Erg. Wait, that thing isn't dead? What the hell? There it goes. Okay, sit still. Break your jaw. Now, if I get invaded again, I'm probably just gonna have to switch to offline because I can't. I can't sit here and there's the shadows of Yarnum. I can't sit here and mess with invaders like this. Okay, I'm gonna activate that real quick, and then this doesn't operate because this is the shortcut that takes you directly up to the boss and the reason people invade here is literally because of that right there if they start to lose they can run back there and use shadows of Yarnum against you as well as giant pigs it is extremely asshole to invade here because as an invader in this game I can understand why people would want to use enemies against you because obviously you get a like a, a health reduction when you invade, which is stupid. I don't know what FromSoft was thinking, I don't know why they would make that a thing at all, but there is a health reduction when you invade in this game just like there's a health reduction when you are a helpful phantom. And this jump is like super fucked up hard to make. I'm surprised I did it on the first try. That was disturbing. Oh my god, I hate this bird so much. And I'm gonna get invaded during this part, just watch. Okay. There it is. Wait until it goes around the corner. Blue elixir, why not? Oh, now it doesn't want to do the glitch. That's interesting. Now, they have to physically have eyes on you to be able to frenzy you. And that is a fact. Like, I mean, every second that you are behind this wall and it can't see you, you can't be frenzied. Like, I mean, the, the frenzy bar mates build... That. God. Nope. No, 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 no. Oh my god, I used it. Look, it even went down from nine from ten to nine. 
I totally used it and it didn't work. Wow. Now that was dirty, Bloodborne. You cannot... No. There's no way. You cannot count that the item was used and then not actually give me the effect of the item. That was dirty. Okay, fine. Fine. I'm gonna have... I, I can't worry about getting invaded while I'm dealing with the stress of this fucking annoying level. Because this, this entire level itself is already going to piss me off. I mean, I'm just, I'm mentally prepared for that. I knew that we were reaching this point in the game where I was just going to get extremely frustrated with Bloodborne. And this, this whole level, like when you're, every playthrough that you do in this game, this whole level feels like a chore for me. It feels like I have to force myself to play this level and... At no point in this level, I mean, from the instant you see Nightmare Mensis pop up on that screen and those big white letters, I don't enjoy one ounce of this game from that step to the end. Yeah, Bloodborne is officially going to make my blood boil until Murgo's Wet Nurse is dead. And because I have a ton of souls, that is going to be the reason that I don't make this jump this time. Watch. I'm just calling it now. But I do have to go down here. There is significance to taking this path down that I have to show you guys. Oh my god, that was annoying. Like, you see, I had 10 sedatives, and it used the item. It physically consumed it, but it didn't give me the actual effect of the item. Like, that was totally fucked up. Oh, this game hates me. I don't know if the blue elixir made a difference right there, so I don't think I'm going to use it again. That thing has my fucking souls, too. Come on! No, stop! I wonder if I can knock her over. Looks like I can. Stop it! Stop it! She can't see me! Stop! Mm -hmm. Frenzy! Swear to God, Frenzy is the worst thing ever. I hate you. Come here. Look at how far it builds just from being seen for half of a second. Damn. And it doesn't go through the wall either. You need to get the fuck out of here. Use it! Use it! Thank you. God. <sighs> that is a really good blood gemstone, by the way. 
Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Why don't you just run past it if it sucks? No, because of that. And we got a tier 11 Ken Coldblood, too. Very, very good blood, blood echo item. There's two of them. Okay. Here's the good news about this part. These ones don't drop anything. <laughs> Go ahead and pop this again. Yeah, this part is particularly awful. And you have people faced spiders, too. Weird. Bullets. Okay, and don't let the spiders fool you. They might be small, but they can do so much damage. It's stupid. And it is currently raining. Alright, before you drop down there, definitely come over here. That may have looked really strange and random, but I promise it wasn't. And did that remind any of you guys of anything from Demon Souls, particularly? Okay. That fucking thing over there cannot see you if you're behind the pillars, which is nice. We have that to worry about, though. This is... This is kind of why I wanted Molotovs, so I could nail them. Spider! Come on. Yes! Ow! Nope! 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 So here's what we're going to have to do. I'm going to go over here. Fight this thing. No! No! Do your thing. Use it! Yeah, that didn't work either. <laughs> Grr. Okay, Cursed Tempering Blood Jam Stint. Okay, whatever. This particular item that's not going to be necessarily useful for us, the Choir Bell, is a rather important item for a lot of people, though. I don't know how many people watching this video are going to want to do very heavily arcane-based builds. I don't blame you if you don't, because, I mean, arcane builds are not anything special. They're not like... For example, it's not like having a intelligence build in Dark Souls or Demon Souls. It's no, they're nowhere near comparable. But for those of you who want to get this item, invigorates all cooperating parties, healing them. It requires 15 arcane and it costs 7 bullets. This is a group heal item. It's kind of nice. It's, uh, perfect if you're a ganker. Great One's Wisdom. Arcane Damp Blood Gem. That is the Cadillac of Arcane Gemstones. It's not necessarily the best one in the game. The best one in the game is found in a Chalice Dungeon, but... You get what I mean. It's pretty nice. Thunder, though, it is 
I really hope my power does not go out while I'm recording. That would be highly aggravating. All right. And the other thing that we need to get here that is probably the most important thing in the entire level is down there. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to open this door first. Iron door key. There you go. Okay, that is our shortcut. And this, if you guys recognize it, is where we fought uh, Mikolash, host of the nightmare. There's a reason that it brought us back here, too. We're going to want to come back here, not for those things. We are going to want to come back here, because that is where the cutscene took place. Where the big giant eyeball thing that looks kind of like the demon heart from Demon Souls in the Tower of Latria, that's where that thing fell, was back there in that general area. Alright, now it's time to drop down. Yes, you have to take damage. There's no way around it. Boom! The Blood Rock. That is how you max out your weapon. And this is where the thing fell, by the way. You can actually see it down there. Just barely. And this is going to take us to that general area. We're going to go destroy that thing. You are not hostile. I will not kill you. Most of these things are not hostile when they choose to be. Alright. Did I end up getting make contact? That's the question. It does not look like I did. Okay. I don't have make contact, which is fine. Whatever. But it would be particularly useful for this part. Alright. And then this cage has officially been lowered for us, too. This is something that is really easy to miss when you play this game. Ah, <laughs> that thing fell. There you are. Okay, let's use our lantern. That's not doing shit. How about the torch? Do we have one? No, of course not. Well, you see this big bug-eyed freak. Has a big hand and everything. This is a great one, and you can see it follows us with its eye. It looks at us. It is indeed a great one. It has many eyes. and has lots of insight, you could say. If you use the make contact gesture in front of this thing and hold it, you will get another moon rune. I believe it's the tier 2 one, not the tier 3 one. But, yeah. You, the moon rune. And then you can kill it. There's no point in letting it live. This is probably going to take a while. Oh, yeah. The regain effect, though.
Yeah, this kind of takes a while, but, you know, it's whatever. Man, 429 versus 535. It is definitely worth it to have that buff. Alright, you get a certain amount of blood echoes from that thing, and then you get Living String, which is a Chalice Dungeon item. Special material used in a Holy Chalice Ritual. Damn, that thunder is getting really loud. Okay. And that is that whole entire part where the Mind Flares and stuff are. Now we are going to have to head in the actual direction of, uh... These things gonna attack me. Let's use one of these just in case. Nice try. Uh, now we're gonna have to head in the actual direction where Shadows of Yarnum were walking, and once that that's gonna be a very short area. It's gonna be really quick. Let's go back to our hunter's dream. All of your sedatives were to be saved up for that very part right there. And they played pretty good use. Sleepy. Okay, let's see if we can level up at least twice from that. Once again? Damn. Okay. Let's get ourselves some vitality. Farewell. We'll buy some stuff. Okay. I have 10, so I need 13. Alright. Oh yeah, and the moon runes actually stack. You can combine them, like as in have nothing but all three moon runes and get a shit ton of blood echoes. So, alright. That is going to do it for this one. And, uh, I do apologize again for the, the long pause of not uploading and not updating you guys or anything, but I've been having to go to multiple doctor visits and stuff, and it's just, it's been a little bit hectic. I didn't know that so much could go wrong from hurting your back. It was a learning experience for me, a painful one, but I think I'm I think I'm good now. Uh, I'm not going to wait two months to upload again. I am definitely going to have this walkthrough finished before Dark Souls 3 comes out, and since I'm not uploading my first playthrough of Dark Souls, I can probably be a little bit more active with you guys, and uh, I'll, I'll be willing to actually play it with you guys so when Dark Souls 3 comes out the expert walkthrough is not going to happen a month or two months or whatever after the game comes out it's not gonna be like that it's probably gonna take a while this expert walkthrough was kinda rushed I, I tried to start this expert walkthrough fairly soon after the game came out and uh, yeah, it's been a little jumbled, but Dark Souls 3, I'm going to take my time and do a lot of research, and I'm going to beat the game a lot, many times, and I'll probably create live stream events out of that, and PvP tournaments and stuff, and it's, it's going to be a blast. So, that's going to do it for this one. In the next video, we are going to proceed up to Murgo's Wet Nurse, which is the next boss. It is probably... Second favorite boss in the game. Very cool moveset. Very cool, just like, Diablo feel to it. And, uh... After that, we're gonna be able to beat the game. And do the last two bosses. And then it'll be finished. So, the next video could quite possibly be the last one. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. 
So, thank you guys so much for watching as always. I have been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I will catch all of you in the next video.